Let us talk about what these nucleic acids are made up of. Nucleic acids are polymers of nucleotides and they are made up of one that is pentose sugar, two nitrogen bases and three phosphoric acid. Now let us talk about these three components of the nucleic acids. Pentose sugar as the name tells us it is a five carbon sugar and the pentose sugars are of two types. Ribose and deoxyribose. Both these sugars are five carbon sugars, pentose sugars. Ribose sugar, if we see the structure, it has a pentagonal shape and let us number these carbons. Here is carbon number one, this is two, here is going to be three, this is four and the fifth carbon is here. So it is a ring which is made up of four carbons and one oxygen. We call such a ring as furanose ring and in this case it is having hydrogen and hydroxyl group here, hydrogen and hydroxyl, hydrogen and hydroxyl here. This carbon has, we have to just keep a check of the valencies here and this carbon has, it is actually CH2OH. So this is ribose sugar. The important thing that we have to remember which we will need later on is that on carbon number 2 and 3 there are functional groups that is OH. Though there are two functional groups in case of the ribose sugar. Let us talk about deoxyribose and how is it different from ribose sugar. Everything is same. It is also a same kind of ring which is made up of five carbons and one oxygen. So this is carbon number one, two, three, four and fifth carbon is here. In case of ribose, we saw that carbon number one has H and OH. Carbon number two also has H and OH. In case of deoxy, there is H and H. That means this OH is replaced by simple hydrogen. Carbon number 3 has H and OH, 4 has H and this is CH2OH. So the only difference between ribose and deoxyribose is at carbon number 2 where instead of OH in ribose, here it is without that oxygen. So that is why we are calling it deoxyribose sugar. But this one difference makes a very huge difference in the molecule that is the DNA molecule which we will be getting. Here there is only one functional group at carbon number 3 whereas here there are two functional groups and more the number of functional groups the molecule becomes more reactive. The genetic material has to be stable. So when we come to the comparison between RNA and DNA this structure is going to help us conclude that RNA is going to be more reactive because of these two functional groups here and DNA is going to be less reactive or more stable and that is why DNA is the genetic material. Okay, so these are the two pentose sugars. Nitrogen bases. The nitrogen bases are divided into two categories. Let me shift this phosphoric acid a little down so that we get enough space. Phosphoric acid. So nitrogen bases are categorized as purines and pyrimidines. Let us compare these two now. Purines, there are two examples of purines that is adenine and guanine. There are three pyrimidines. So here the examples would be cytosine, thiamine and uracil. Two purin 
pyramids and three pyramids. But in a nucleic acid, two purines are present and two pyrimidins are present. In case of DNA, if it is DNA, the pyrimidins which would be present are going to be C and T. And in case of nucleic acid that is RNA, it is going to be C and U. That means T will get replaced by U whenever we talk of RNA. Purines are dicyclic molecules. That means the molecule is made up of two cyclic uh, compounds or rings. Whereas pyrimidines are monocyclic. Third point which we need to understand. Purines have four nitrogen atoms and these atoms are at position first, third, seventh and ninth. So these are the positions at which the nitrogen atoms are present in the purines. Pyrimidines have two nitrogen atoms. And these nitrogen atoms are present at position first and third. So this is at fourth position that is first, third, seventh and ninth. Whereas pyrimidines have two nitrogen atoms at position one and three. Fourth point. These purines are attached to the pentose sugar. Now the position of the pentose sugar where the nitrogen bases are attached is carbon number 1. So here is going to be the nitrogen base which will attach itself. Same is going to be here. So this is the place where the nitrogen base is attached. That means first carbon of the pentose sugar. In case of purine, the bond which is formed is between first carbon of pentose sugar and the ninth position of the purines. Ninth of purines. So it is going to be first carbon of pentose sugar and the ninth position where there is a nitrogen of purine. And in case of pyrimidine, it is the first carbon of pentose sugar and the first position of the pyrimidine. That means the nitrogen base that is pyrimidine would get attached to the first carbon of pentose sugar with its first position. And at this first position also there is a nitrogen. So when the bond formation takes place, then it is between the first position of pentose sugar and ninth position of purine rings and first position of pentose sugar and first position of pyrimidine. The bond which is formed is glycosidic bond. We'll talk about that glycosidic bond when we come to the structure of nucleoside and nucleotide. Now the third thing that is the phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid that is H3PO4. It is phosphorus. Here is OH, OH, OH and O. This is phosphoric acid. One of the hydroxyl group will make a bond with the fifth carbon of the pentose sugar. So it is attached at fifth carbon of the pentose sugar. Now let us talk about how these three things combine to form the nucleotide and these nucleic acids are polymers of these nucleotides. Before we take up the structure of nucleotides let us quickly go over this. Nucleic acids are made up of three things pentose sugar a five carbon sugar two types of pentose sugars ribose and deoxyribose. Ribose is present in RNA, deoxyribose is present in DNA. Ribose sugar 
is a ring which is made up of four carbons and oxygen. Let us not get confused here. It is a five carbon compound. But when we are talking of only the ring, the ring is made up of one oxygen and these four carbons. The fifth carbon is attached in the form of an arm. So there are two things which we have to remember. Ribose sugar is a five carbon sugar. But the ring, that is the furanose ring, which it makes, is actually made up of four carbons and one oxygen. This fifth carbon is in the form of the arm. Here, carbon number two and three both have OH as functional groups. In deoxyribose sugar, from carbon number two, OH is replaced by H. That means basically oxygen is less and that is why the name deoxy. Now, coming to the second component that is nitrogen base, we divide them into two categories, purins and pyrimidins. Two examples of purins that is adenosine and guanine. We represent them with alphabet A and G here. And pyrimidins are three, cytosine by C, thiamine by T and uracil by U. In a nucleic acid, only two of these three are present. If it is DNA, it is going to be C and T. And if it is RNA, T gets replaced by U. So it is going to be C and U. Purins are dicyclic compounds. Two cyclic molecules are chains together. This is monocyclic. In case of purins, there are four nitrogen atoms at position 1, 3, 7 and 9. Whereas in case of pyrimidines, there are only two nitrogen atoms at positions 1st and 3rd. Now when we can talk of attachment, the purins, when they are attached to pentose sugar, it is always first carbon of pentose sugar and ninth position in case of purine and first position in case of pyrimidine. Coming to phosphoric acid, this is the structure and phosphoric acid is always attached to the fifth carbon of the pentose sugar. Now combining these three things, let us make the structure of a nucleotide. Let us now see the structure of a nucleus. nucleotide. And as we said that nucleotides are made up of three things. That is a pentose sugar. And we have seen both the sugars. We are talking about deoxyribose sugar. So this is the deoxyribose sugar, 5 carbon ring. And this is carbon number 1, 2, 3, 4. And the fifth one is here. We said that nitrogen base is attached at carbon number 1. So here is going to be the nitrogen base and phosphoric acid is attached here. Now how are these bonds formed? This bond is known as glycosidic bond. The bond which is formed here, if we just write the functional group, it is going to be CH2OH this is at carbon 5 and here is phosphoric acid. It has OH here, double bond O again OH and OH. This is phosphoric acid. And the bond which is formed is by elimination of a water molecule. So this water molecule is lost and this bond which is formed is known as phosphodiester bond. So there are two types of bonds which are formed here. One, a glycosidic bond which is formed between the pentose sugar and the nitrogen base whether it is purin or pyrimidin and between the pentose sugar and phosphoric acid the bond is known as phosphodiester bond. The carbon numbers where these bonds are formed are fixed and that is why we get the clear structure of DNA or RNA. It is first carbon of pentose sugar and the nitrogen base. It could be ninth position in case of purine and first position in case of pyrimidine. And fifth carbon of pentose sugar and phosphoric acid. So phosphoric acid will always come at the fifth position of the pentose sugar. This is a nucleotide. If we talk of another molecule which is known as nucleoside. 
nucleoside is a molecule in which there is a pentose sugar and nitrogen base. That means nucleoside is nucleotide minus phosphate. If we remove this, then the molecule which remains is pentose sugar and nitrogen base without phosphoric acid. We will call it nucleoside. And what is nucleotide? It is nucleoside plus phosphate. But while naming, we have to be very, very careful. We'll take one example to understand. Suppose we are talking of DNA molecule. If it is DNA, the sugar is going to be deoxyribose sugar. And say it binds with adenine. And the molecule is DNA. This structure, it has pentose sugar and nitrogen base. That means it is a nucleoside. This is a nucleoside. And if deoxyribose sugar, adenine, and say there is phosphate also attached. Now this is a nucleotide. There is a difference when we name them. The nucleoside will be known as deoxyadenosine. And if we are talking of, a, of nucleotide, there is a phosphate now. So it will be called deoxyadenosine monophosphate. So, when we have to name them, then also we have to pay minute attention because the nucleotides are named in a different manner and nucleosides are named in a different manner. And similarly, if we are talking of RNA, then also the nucleotides and nucleosides will be different. In all the books, the tables are given in which all four nucleosides and nucleotides of DNA are named and all four nucleotides and nucleosides of RNA are named. So that table has to be studied very, very carefully, specifically the names of these. Because in competitive exam, these kind of simple questions are asked. They give us these kind of structures and ask us to pick the name. So nucleosides and nucleotides are named in a different manner. So we need to be very careful when we are reading these kind of questions. So nucleotides and nucleosides. So up till now what we have seen is that nucleic acids, they are made up of three things, pentose sugars, nitrogen bases and phosphoric acid. These three things combined give us a nucleotide. And now we will talk of the DNA molecule. And we said DNA is a polymer of nucleotides. That means many nucleotides would bind or join to form the DNA molecule. So in the next video, we'll talk about the DNA molecule, its structures and its various types.